about oh, five years ago, I did a uh, European workshop in, in Holland and we uh, stayed in these two wonderful towns, small towns, Bolandam and Delft. This happens to be Delft in the evening and actually did a painting in the evening standing on just this side of this bridge down, there's another canal that connects right through here. And uh, as I was walking back to our room, I, it was, I noticed this view and I grabbed a quick shot of it. Always thought I'd paint it. And so I'm going to for you guys, okay? Uh, did some marks in here, don't like some of them. I, I just realized it. And what I did is I drew with one of these uh, Trombo type pens. Um, I noticed that I could probably, that bridge could probably be up a little bit higher and which would raise everything. It's gonna make this little doorway about up in here. And it's the bridge is probably gonna be more like about here. So I'm gonna change it as I paint it. When I usually put marks down in a plain air piece, a location, a plain air piece, which I'm trying to paint this like it's that, uh, I often get a drawing down and then I reevaluate it and go, you know, I'm not crazy. I think it's so instead of redrawing it, what I try and do is correct it as I paint it. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do. I was going to sit down and recorrect this whole thing. And then I thought, now I'm going to show you guys how to recorrect as you paint. So let's start. I'm going to deepen that sky a little bit because it was evening. And so I'm going to start with, I have a light blue out here. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, let's just start with a plain old light blue. Nothing, no tricks, not, no tr stuff thrown into it. So we're just gonna kinda, and I'm using a little gesso brush, just simply, cause I can probably lay, I lay the paint down much sloppier with uh, a brush like this than I do. Rosemary brushes, which are really my favorites. Uh, they tend to be beautiful for control. And at this point, I almost don't want a lot of control. I want kind of, um, freedom. I want the freedom to be wrong. And I already have the drawing there because that's wrong. So why not uh, do the rest of it that way? So we're going to kind of, I want to rub it in a little bit like this as opposed to really paint it down because I'm going to be coming over it with the, uh, with some foliage and branches and the thicker I have that paint and the more wet I have that paint, the more difficult it's, it will end up being for me to paint any sort of um, foliage over it. So what I do is just kind of scrub it down like this and just rub the heck out of it, you know? Let's get over here. I really, you can probably hear how this is a piece of uh, hardboard that I've toned, almost with a skin tone, look at that. Now your skin tone, obviously, probably isn't the same as mine. I have a lot of red in my skin tone. Um, most people don't have as much red. So I just use it, you know, and not only that, I, I'm kind of a little bit deceiving when I say skin tone because uh, I've got friends of mine, African-American friends of mine who have darker skin tones. So we put our hands down together, the skin tone is going to be darker. So it's probably... I'm probably being uh, a little bit simplistic when I say skin tone, because it's really not just the skin tone. It's really kind of a light middle gray. And it can be on the warm side as this is, or it can be on the green side. It can be on any direction you want it. Uh, I, I don't like it to get too dark. If I'm painting a night scene, hey, you know, that might work. This is kind of an evening scene. Uh, there's a lot of darkness. It's pretty a low key painting. So there's a lot of darkness in it. So we're going to start with this. Then we're going to get some big dark masses in here so I can start to get the structure, the value structure, so to speak, of this painting down. So I'm taking some blue and some burnt umber together. Blue, whenever I say blue, unless I, I, I refer to light blue, I'm always referring to alt, ultramarine blue. I'm going to take a little bit of turp with this color. And we're just going to kind of smear it in here. Yes, what did I say, turp? Yeah. yeah. And when I say turp, I mean gamsol. 
I just show my age when I use these terms, terp. They didn't have Gamsol. They had, they had, you know, when I was an art student and when I was first painting, they just had that smelly junk, you know, plain old turpentine. Then they came out with terpenoid, which is odorless, um, which is fine. It's, you know, it's still relatively toxic. Um, and then they came out with Gamsol, which is the least toxic. And they also have a terpenoid natural, which I use sometimes. I uh, haven't used it for quite a while, but I've taken it on vacation with me. Just for fun. Uh, let's see. We just got this mass in. I want to leave. I didn't leave enough room there. I don't mind that. We're going to lighten it up with a little cad orange and a little yellow ochre. And what I'm going to do is I'm just painting this. Not, I want it lighter still. So through a little bit of a little, this time I lightened it up with a little bit of a uh, Naples yellow. So let's try this. Yeah, it feels better. That's what, when I say feels better, that's really what I'm going for. You know, it's like a, a feeling that, that you're trying to portray. So you can hear I'm rubbing again. So when you hear that chatter, it just means I'm rubbing on this. You wouldn't hear it if it were canvas. But on, um, on this hardboard, you hear it quite a bit, so. I don't want to secure it. Let's. I could secure it better. Um, I kind of like the bounce around and the, the noise makes me feel kind of like I'm a construction guy and doing something really important. You're so weird. Okay, let's. We're just going for shapes, just big old shapes. And I know I'm a little off in some, but you know what? If you didn't see, if this looks good at the end and I don't have these proportions correct, uh, the painting will still work. And that's really, that's really important for everybody to understand. You can drive yourself bananas. And unless you're doing a portrait of a building or a portrait of a person, uh, the exactness in terms of, of proportion and everything isn't as important. It, it's the painting that we're going for, not so to speak, the exactness of proportion. Now let's build some of these darks back in here. That's pretty dark. And because it's evening um, and we're not dealing with really uh, deep space, then I can be pretty true to the darkness here. So we're gonna kind of, this is that tree back there. And we, it has kind of a, one of these edges that you really can't tell what the heck it's doing. And so what I like to do when I get those edges is just kind of scrub a little bit and make it almost abstracted. This is where anybody that has done any abstract painting actually has a head up on any of you uh, pure realists because they learn how to use their brush in a more gestural type of lay in, which is what we're trying to get here. Try to get a little bit more of a gestural uh, imagery in here. And then we'll just bring it up back in here. And then some darks. I want to, I, this, oh, this is that lay-in stage. And the lay-in stage, you know, I look at an hour and a half painting, which is what we're doing always weekly. And I say, how am I going to use the hour and a half? Or if I'm on location, I know I'm going to work for two hours. I, I, in my mind, I kind of figure out how I'm going to use that time. Um, and I, I know I always have to go through the, the stage of lay-in, the stage of modeling, uh, color variation, whatever. And then I have to leave always a little bit of time for what I like to call refinement. Um, so the way I look at it in an hour and a half painting is take the first 30 minutes. If you can get it done in the last, great. But the first 30 minutes and that's your lay-in. Then what do you do? You take your next, 20, uh, your next 40 minutes because Truthfully, the middle stage of any painting, I believe this wholeheartedly, by the way, the middle stage, which is the stage you do your modeling, you do all the intricacy and color variation, you do all of that, that is always the stage that'll take you the longest. And you, you don't want to cut yourself short, but when you're doing a location piece, you are 
you know, minimizing that amount of time. You're not getting the full amount that you would generally like to get in a, in a full on what we would call a finished painting. Uh, so I, I, I look at it this way, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's a time concept. And the concept is be as true to that time frame as you possibly can. If you cut yourself short on the refinement stage, and so I'm saying, what am I gonna leave myself? 20 minutes, so now in past weeks, sometimes I've ended up with 15 minutes. And uh, then you have to kind of edit your refinement stage. So each stage of your painting is equally important. Lay-in is tremendously important because that sets up everything. If you don't get that lay-in in, chances are the rest of it's not gonna work. So that lay-in is always, always important. Um, don't, don't, if, if you ever hear me say things that sound like they're contradictory, ignore them because it's the lay-in that is really crucial. So this is the lay-in. Uh, that middle stage, it adds the believability, the intricacy of form, the beginning of the indication of what you might consider detail. That's that mid stage. And the final stage is probably, it's important, but it may be a little less important than the other two stages because you can always get by leaving certain things alone. So here's what I'm doing. I'm trying to paint the shadow side of this red building. I love this building. This, uh, we ate dinner in this building one night and it, it's really, it, it's the oldest building in Delft, if I recall. So there, I, I want to get that perspective. You know, when you do it, one of the things about doing architecture is you can't mess up your perspective. Oh, you can mess it up. You don't want to mess up your perspective. Let's put it that way. Uh, because, you know, I've seen paintings that, I, that were wonderful, wonderful paintings that I've really been impressed with. And then when I looked at it closer, I saw all kinds of perspective problems and it just kind of defeats the beauty of, uh, of the color and, you know, the, the value of that painting. And it just, to me, it crushes it. And so uh, I don't think that's just me. I, I, I do believe that it's true. I, I think most people would probably agree with me that if you're gonna do something that involves perspective, damn it, you better be right with it. You know, it's just, it'll drive you crazy if you're not. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the front of this, which is lighter and a little bit more red. And so I'm using a lot of this cat orange uh, hue. And I'm gonna try it, first of all, I'm gonna compare it to that so we get the corner difference. You know, it's pretty close, pretty close. So I'm gonna go a little bit lighter and we'll try it one more time. There we go. And as it goes up, it's being lit from below. I can, you can tell because it's brighter down here than it is up here. So at, down at this point, I want to keep it brighter. So I'm using more of the cad orange pure. Mitchell, it's oh, cad orange hue, excuse me. Mitchell had a great, um, said, I'd like a three act play. Act one lays the foundation. Act two is usually the longest act. And act three is shorter and brings the story home with a satisfying ending. I like that. Would you write that down and send that to me? It's so, right here. <laughs> okay. You're absolutely right. You're you're one hundred percent correct. Yeah, I like I've, I've actually never thought of it that way, uh, and you can you can relate that to music, I guess, the same way. So, we're kind of getting it darker as it goes up. I don't know if I'm going to be right initially, so I give myself room to go back and fix it if I'm not. Again, that same old line that I use all the time. I know you guys got get tired of hearing it, but I don't I don't get tired of saying it. So I'm sorry if you get tired of hearing it. Is that you know paint like you know what you're doing and assume you're wrong? I do that all, all the time. And assuming you're wrong is not a bad thing, by the way. Because all you're doing is you're giving yourself license. 
and that license, you're giving yourself license to be wrong. You're saying, you know, it's like I, I teach a class called Quick Studies, which a lot of students have taken from me. And most of them, not all of them, most of them tend to like it. Uh, but the whole concept of that class is that you're gonna just go for it, but chances are you're not gonna be right and you're gonna have to do an adjustment and fix it. So that's basically how I paint, period. It's not how I paint sometimes, it is how I paint. I, I just always go uh, and proceed with gusto, so to speak. I like that word. Anybody remember the old Schlitz commercials? You only go around once, mm -hmm. you gotta use gusto. Gusto means power. So the power right now is that, damn it, I'm right. And at the same time, in the back of my head, I'm going, but maybe not. Just knowing that it's okay to. What's that? Just knowing that it's okay that you might have to adjust it. Like and, Anna just said, knowing it's okay. She tells her students this all the time in her still life class knowing that you may have to adjust it. And it's not that precious. Don't figure any stroke. It's why you don't want to be overly um, concerned with those first strokes. You want, if there's perspective involved, hell yes. You want to be as close as you can be. But generally speaking, you know, give yourself some slack and know that you have the ability at any time. And this is probably the hardest thing. You have the ability at any time to go back and make it right. It's a little, this little addendum here is, in, is actually, I would call it, it's a little outdoor area uh, that they've enclosed uh, that's at the back of this uh, restaurant, this building, this old building. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm just going on, you know, my uh, poor memory now, but if I'm not mistaken, at one time, I think this was an art studio. And I don't, I, I recall talking to uh, one of the people there and or reading at one of the other. So it was the, like I said, the, this building is the oldest building in um, Delft. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the time here. And I'm, I'm behind in my own mind right now, I am behind where I wanna be. It's about, I've worked for about 15 minutes on this thing. Um, at 30, I wanna have everything covered. And what that means is that is the lay in. So keep that in mind as I move along here, because I'm gonna try and make up some time here. So I went real dark now. By real dark, I eat umber, which I have umber out and not asphaltum, um, and blue, ultramarine. So we're gonna go right here. Good try. I'm raising that bridge now. Just like I said, I was gonna do, and the bridge goes there. And then it it arcs up to about this point. It actually, I shouldn't say arc, it peaks. Because these bridges go this way, this way, this way, and down. This is a great town. We, we happened to be, there were two towns in Holland when we were there. Uh, we were in Volendam, which is quite nice. But the two towns that I completely was enamored with um, after being there, one was this town, Delft, and there's a big university here uh, right outside the city limits. And this is a walled city, by the way. Um, one is Delft and the other is Edom, which is just like, two minutes from Volendam and both of those towns, I would go back and stay in, in Edom in a second. And it was a, a wonderful workshop. There were, Holland is, Holland, for those of you guys that haven't been there and or haven't painted there is as much of a painter's paradise, I think, as is Venice. And that's really saying a lot for me because I happen to be a, a Venice nut when it comes to painting. So, and most of our the workshops that I've done over there have been in Italy and even, even uh, 
developing the Academy, uh, Academy of Art, their study abroad program in Florence, which unfortunately is not going to run this summer because of COVID. But we're we've already talked with the uh, with our our uh, host school over there, Sarisa, and we will return in. 2022. It's just a little soon to try it this this summer. But Teresa themselves, I think, will be operating. So if any of you guys uh, out there want to just go over and work with Teresa, you're more than welcome to. So it's a it's a wonderful uh, little school. Nice location right in the heart of Florence. About an hour and a half by train to Venice, same to Rome. So any of you guys that know Florence know what a great location. But we're not dealing with Florence today, we're dealing with Holland. The hotel is great there too. <clears throat> what is? The hotel there. In, in Delft? The hotel there. Yeah. We stayed, uh, the name of our hotel just, just to kind of inspire everyone that was there was the Hotel Vermeer. <laughs> and it wasn't intended to intimidate people. Vermeer's house is here, by the way. He's from Delft. So Vermeer's house is actually right in Delft. It's a walking distance of this. It's right across the way. Yeah, it was. It was very, very close. I keep forgetting how close it was. So what I try and do right now is unify some of these darks. I will separate them, but initially you want to unify them. So we're going for perspective. So we want this back here. This is going to be that perspective. Then it comes down. And I'm just guessing that it looks like it, it's about in here. This is the blue and brown together once again. The looser and more indicative you can be and not try and be too precise at this particular time, the better off for you. And I'll, I'll hopefully we'll explain why, because what I will do is, uh, and I, I've mentioned this in many demos and most of the time whenever I demo is, it's, it's the end of the painting that you want to really look good. The beginning should kind of give a, an, for lack of a better word, an abstracted characteristic of what you're painting, right? In other words, not exact, but kind of an abstracted feel of what it is you're painting. What I just did with this little dab here is paint that. And it's probably gonna come up a little higher, right about here, okay? And that's gonna make this about here. I'm just looking for, there is actually this doorway this doorway is I'm going to do something right here. We're going to put, this is a little too thick of a brush. Um, I'm better to use like my rosemary number eight, which I call my workhorse brush a lot of times. You know, people would, will watch me paint and they'll say, well, it's sometimes your little uh, um, gesso brush appears to be your workhorse brush. Uh, it is for the land a lot of times, but for the overall painting, if I had to sit back and only use one brush from beginning to end of the painting, well, that's it. It's a number eight. It's, it's not big and it's not small. And because of that, it kind of works well uh, for a lot of this kind of stuff. So he, that tells me right there that that is where this is. And Changing it up a little bit. So we're probably gonna end up moving this over further, which is perfectly all right. I already moved the door over if you not, haven't noticed. And that's, that's part of the correction part that you're gonna be doing as you paint. You're gonna correct things. You're gonna say, well, it looks like, you know, I left that one room area for the door, but I was wrong. So I need to kind of compensate like filling back in here, okay? And let's get this ground plane. I think it's gonna help a lot. The ground plane looks like it should come from right about here. And it is a, there's a piece of lawn there. 
actually painted out on that lawn one uh, morning. And the lawn extends way back by some other trees. So it's green mixed in a little bit with brown and ochre. And we're gonna go right here. It's, but the values are so close back in here. Probably be a little lighter, just a little Naples thrown into it. Bring it right about here, there, there. Isn't that chocolate shop around the corner? Other side of the yeah, there's a wonderful chocolate. Well, Dutch chocolate. You guys are probably all are aware that Dutch chocolate is kind of a, one of their their cheese and chocolate probably are their two big delicacies. And uh, as is their beer, I must say, uh, but. If you walk right down between this church and this old building, it opens up into a big plaza, the center of town. And they have a wonderful chocolate shop there. And a lot of times we go in the morning and get um, hot chocolate there, the whole group. In fact, we brought back, and the way they did hot chocolate, it was kind of cool. Uh, I've seen them do it here a little bit, where they actually have, it's like a chocolate bar. And they take that chocolate bar and you can get it with a little bit of honey, you can get it with a little ginger. You can, they have different ones infused, rosemary. And you, they take that chocolate bar and they put it in scalding hot water and they let it dissolve. It's like on a stick. Yeah, it's like a popsicle. It looked, or not a popsicle, it looks like a big sucker that you would wanna just eat. Probably drive you crazy, it would be so rich. but. It makes great hot chocolate. And I, we brought some home. You can actually, yeah, you can ship them. Oh, sorry, bump the camera. That wasn't an earthquake, that was me. Now, we're gonna start to finish off the lay-in, which I've only got about five minutes if I'm gonna hold true to my time. If I don't hold true to my time, what does that mean? Well, it means I messed up is what it means. But uh, what it really means is that, so I need to move this over about here, right about there. Because we're gonna shorten up some of these areas in here. Um, let's get a little bit of this laid in. Some of this other stuff is, it's not laid in, but I can probably do it in, in a very short amount of time. One thing I wanna do is get the color of that uh, building coming down below. So it's going to come down here. And then it's a little more of an ochre color, not quite as orange back here, but it's pretty close. So I could, I could actually paint it as a unit if I wanted to. Let's just do that. Sometimes making the strokes different directions is another thing that can really help, by the way. You know, it's, it's, when you teach, when you demonstrate, uh, you always want to um, give pertinent information that, that sometimes we, any anybody that does this kind of stuff, um, we take for granted. We just do it because we're so used to it. And sometimes we don't even say it. So I've got to raise this. I don't like where that's sitting now. I want that about there. Okay, we'll bring a little bit more life to that color there. That feels good. As long as you got that, let's get it down below where it belongs, down in here. Okay, a little bit, a little back here, a little piece of light, a little bit down below where it just kind of sneaks down here before it goes into the deeper shadow. It's not that clean, so I've got to kind of smear it around a little bit. Okay, let's get that lower part in, and then we'll have basically 90% of the lay in done. Uh, this color is going to go all the way down. So I'm just going to pick up my uh, old gesso brush because I can get it down faster with that than any other brush. And we'll just add a lot of medium, and we'll just kind of put it right here and take it. I'm going to go from here. So we're going to go down from 
Here. And then the illumination of, on the side of this building dissipates as it goes up. It's not as bright. So we can kind of do that, come in about here. Going to do this with a lot of medium, a lot of medium meaning a lot of gamsol. The reason I'm using gamsol is it spreads faster, but I want to follow this line down because it gets much darker in this part of the shadow right down in here. So we're going to go right down from here, right from this point down here. Now that tells me that it's about there. So let's just get it in there quick. Instead of messing around a little bit here, let's just get it in, even if I have to go over some of these areas. I'd rather go over them and have to paint, paint over it later. Nice thin, and we got there's some nice brushy marks in there. This, I just kind of scumble a little bit over it. We got that angle is a little bit more severe. And there's a little piece of a wall here. I'm not going to put that in. I, I think that is actually destructive. I don't think that is, adds anything to uh, the painting itself. I want to get a little bit of tone back in here. There are going to be some lily pads and moss that they have, kind of a combination of the two. They actually have it in all the canals there. Really, it makes a great paint, by the way. Probably not good if you ever would swim in it, but people don't swim in these. They do boat in them quite a bit because this actually does work its way out to the Amstel River. Um, so let's leave that alone. Now let's, this is pretty well laid in, except I want to start to get these brighter spots where the light is coming from. Well, where's that light coming from? Well, over here on this side of the canal, there's many, many street lights and buildings. That's why that side will get a little bit more illuminated. Now, it's not a bright color, but it's probably in this, the value range of a um, yellow ochre, just would be my guess. And so let's start with yellow ochre and a little bit of orange right down at the bottom where it's the brightest, right down there. Okay. And if I, I hope I have the time to, to indicate some of that brickwork. That would be the refinement stage, by the way, if I even have, if I can get that far in this amount of time. But we'll give it a shot. You always try for what you think you can do. If you can't do it, no one's gonna know. Now, back behind, it's, has, it's more red and it's darker. It goes down about here. And what we've done is we've closed this area down probably make this a little shorter and we'll go let's see about here now as it goes up it gets a little darker the same color and I can use the paint that I already have there because that actually works well for me meaning the brown that I have there and just mix this color into it and there we get it going darker as it goes up and this same thing is true. Goes a little darker. Almost goes to a. Almost goes to that rich brown black that we've used. That kind of. If I go, let's see, about here, you have a little top on it, and then we pick up here, go down. Comes down about to the middle of that window, and perspective. Just a very slight angle, meaning it's a little bit above your eye level. This is almost eye level right here from where I'm standing, because I can, the reason I'm saying that it's parallel. So we're going to come down here, over, and we're going to come over. Whether I have this at the exact right height, really doesn't matter right now. And then down here. So we started to get a little perspective in there. Also gets a little darker up here. So why not take the color that I already have in this brush and just push it back into the paint that I, that I have down there. 
smear it around until it gets nice and dark. At this side, right here, this all gets a little darker, by the way. If I can do it, definitely as it moves up, it gets darker up in here. So I'm just taking that same color I just used and I'm smearing it right back into that initial kind of brownish color that I laid down there. And the same is true back here. It gets a little bit darker. It actually has a little bit of red into it. So I just took some cad red light and moved the cad red light into that color. I don't like it. So I'm gonna move a little blue back into that color to darken it. It was a little too bright for me. I like that better. Yep, works much better. Once again, paint like you know what you're doing, but assume you're wrong. And the assumption that I was wrong helped me there. So we're gonna just paint that little strip in, which is again, kind of yellow ochre-ish with a little bit of a, little bit of a red into it. And I still have dirt in this brush, dirt meaning paint from that I'd been using. So it's going to, it's gonna tone it down a little bit. It's not gonna be as bright, but we're gonna paint that side of it. And that's way too bright, by the way. Uh, and add a little bit more brown to it. Or I call it brown, but it's really just dirt. Now up the top, it looks like there's a little of illumination, but it's not a bright illumination. It's right about in here. And I'm five minutes over where I want to be, just so you know. That just means I have to cut down a little bit, either on the refinement stage or the um, modeling stage. But it's starting to get the feel, the look. And that's to me is important that I get, I get the appropriate lay-in. So it has kind of the, the, the look that the image that I'm actually trying to portray has. So we've, we've closed these areas down a little bit. That works pretty good. And it steps back right about in there. So we're just gonna hit that, leave that alone. I'm gonna get a, a color down in here. And then we're gonna work on that, on what we call the modeling stage. Um, I don't want, that brush probably has a lot of brown in it. So I'm gonna squeeze a lot of it out with, with some Gamsol and go back to the light blue but I'm actually gonna go a little darker than the light blue. Because as I mentioned on this whole painting, the reflections tend to be a little bit darker. So I just threw some ultramarine into that light blue, by the way. And once again, scrub it in there. And we can cut in and make that angle appropriate. Comes about here. Now, when, one of the things that I like to do is as it comes forward, darken it a little bit. So I threw some more ultramarine into that color, just and maybe a little bit of safflower oil, just to kind of mix it in. There we go. I kind of like that better. And then as it moves up, it get a little lighter. Now, what I can do also up here is take the same kind of color move it into the sky. The sky is one flat color, it moves around a little bit. I never worry if I get it as flat. A lot of people say, well, I don't have a good blend. Well, you know what? You just rub it in. And truthfully, it's almost better if it doesn't blend perfectly. So take a little bit more of the light blue, probably gonna need more of it too. And I already have the, the darker blue in the brush. As it goes up, okay. Let's bring this down. Now take a look how much darker it is in the water there. So with that blue, with that blue, I will. Whoops! I bumped. Sorry, I bumped the camera again. No earthquake. Uh, with the blue, I darkened this. And we'll put, we're just following this down. Get a little bit of the, it's probably a little too light. I throw a little bit more red, a little bit more brown into that color. And we'll just get it in there 
And if it's too light, I'll go over it later. We'll get it in there and then get a little bit of this area right here. It goes down around this. Comes up there, comes there. And a little bit right here. So we got we've we've created some of those uh, areas, and what I can do is with the blue and the brown together, come over this one more time, and look how much darker I can make that. Like I, like I've mentioned in the past, I don't want to go with my strongest darks right off the bat, or my strongest lights. And if we need to blend in there, we just kind of rub this right back into this color. Oops, I got two of these little brushes that I'm using back and forth. Please leave it alone. Why do I say that? Because I was fussing too much with it. That's why. So let's go in and start a little bit of refinement, or not refinement, but the in-between stage, and then we'll use the finesse and refinement right at the end. Now, one of the things I want to do is I want to start to get some of the brickwork, particularly around this little element right here. That looks pretty good. Just, by the way, this is an 18 by 24, in case anyone is wondering. I may have said that at the beginning, and I may not have, but that's the size. OK, so we're going to go up above. And then a few of the little bricks pull out. And the same is true here. So if I, the more time you have, the more time I could put into this part of it where I'm really getting into the, to what we what you would call the brickwork. Um, I had a light in that, by the way, it wasn't, there we go. Value's really close. So my first stroke, I realized was a little too dark. That's just about where I want it. The other side is almost a little lighter. A little bit of what we call a control stroke, kind of messed up at the bottom of it, but um, all that kind of stuff can be taken care of with one wisp of a brush. So let's go up. It goes cooler as it goes up. What am I gonna use? Similar value, the light blue, maybe a little ultramarine, but the light blue, but I want it the same value up in here. Pretty good, pretty good. You know, sometimes you're gonna lay this stuff down, you're gonna see little imperfections. I like that, it's very important what I just said, I like that, I think Sometimes the imperfections make it a painting and not a photograph. And give it a little bit of artistic integrity as opposed to, uh, and you know, a lot of that has to do with the kind of artist you are. If you are an artist that loves realism, really pristine realism, then kind of you could ignore what I just said. Or I like looseness. To a degree, and this isn't tremendously loose. This is somewhat, but not what I would call outrageously loose. Um, it's not super precise, so you can call it impressionistic. Let's see where we're at. Okay, and about. I've got about 20 minutes before I get into what I consider the refinement stage, which is okay. I feel like I'm catching up a little bit here. Um, it's just one of those things that you have to kind of look at. And what, when I'm painting on location, I do look at my watch, by the way. Um, I've been asked that. I look at my watch a lot. And I also 
The other thing that I don't do when I'm demonstrating like this is if I'm painting on my own sitting there on location is I stand back a tremendous amount. I would say every two to five minutes I'm, I get back from, from the image that I'm painting. And it's the biggest mistake probably that People stay on top of their painting. And then at the very end, they get back and look at it and it ah, kind of bugs them. Well, if they had stepped back earlier, chances are it wouldn't bother you as much. Because you see those, you, it's easier to see mistakes, flaws, whatever you want to refer to them as when you get back, when you're right on top of your painting, it's very, very difficult sometimes to see those areas and see them as flaws. I don't know if you guys are as fortunate as I am, but I can hear my dog barking outside. He quit. Now, am I doing the exact amount of bricks? Absolutely not. You know, if I want to spend that amount of time, I'll spend that amount of time. But you can't. If you're doing a plain air piece, there's no way. You just look and you say, you get the rhythm. And that's what I call the rhythm, the busyness. I use all those terms a lot. Um, and it's basically just to kind of get, get the, the look. And I only have so much time I figure I can devote to this stuff. In a, whether I'm doing a location painting or whether I'm doing, a, uh, if I'm doing a studio painting, I shouldn't say that, if I'm doing a demonstration, but if I'm doing a full on studio, I could, I could spend six days doing these bricks. If you have the, uh, if you can keep your interest for that, I can't. <laughs> so my biggest problem is, and that's probably why most of my studio work, I paint pretty much like I do when I'm plein air, is um, I have a hard time staying really focused interest-wise on one specific area for a tremendously long period of time. Realists, on the other hand, have to. Real realists. I mean, when we're talking, I'm not even talking photo real. That's why I've always considered myself a little bit more of an impressionist because I've try and paint more of what the impression of the image is. You know, and what's, I, I, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. So how do you determine what the impression of an image is? How does one determine that? Um, it's a rhetorical question because I'm going to answer it. Basically what you do is you look at your image, shut your eyes, open your eyes again for about one to two seconds and shut your eyes and you're painting that. So in one or two seconds, you can't count the number. You see them, you get the impression, but you can't count the number of bricks. So that's where that whole thing of, of painting the impression or the, you know, of, of an image and not all the detail of the image comes in is that you're painting pretty much the, the quick image that you see if you just open your eyes for a short period of time. It's kind of scarred up in here. It's a little lighter in here. Also, I can deepen right here. Okay, also in that bridge, to really give that bridge some wonderful character, we're gonna put a little light right here. Did you discipline our dog? So we're kind of adding a little bit of scuff so it isn't so clean and because it isn't. If it, if it stands out too much, then I'll just push it back. But that it's starting to work. So when it starts to work, uh, my best advice is leave it alone because really you just don't have the time to sit there and make it exactly perfect. 
It's unfortunate, but you don't. So you got to get as close as you can, as quick as you can, and then move on. Now the inside of that bridge, the underside of it's catching just a little bit of weird warm light right about here. And it fades as it goes up, fades. That's a little brighter than I wanted. So I take the, the dark color once again, kind of work your way over it a little bit to knock it back down. And then there's a little, I can see really faintly, just the indication of brickwork. Brickwork much the same as there is on the, the church there right about around this bridge, up, over, it's a little too light. It should be lighter than the area behind. It still has to stay in the shadow of what the bridge is. And it looks like I could probably raise this just a touch. And we'll get a little bit scuff in here. Don't make it quite as neat. And there's a couple of windows that are down. And windows are, are refinement, by the way, you guys. I, that's how I consider them. They're not part of the lay-in. That's part of the refinement stage of the painting. Before someone just scoot up. So we're we're moving along on it, getting it kind of set up. I can one of the things I like to do is kind of come into these areas that are big vacant areas if I have the time and add some smudging so so it doesn't come just I don't want it to look too much, although this as it goes down, as it moves over here and goes down, I can see a warm uh, color begin to influence it right about here. So you have, my eyes, by the way, uh, I think it's important to, to state that as I paint, my eyes are moving constantly over the whole image. But I'm on location, it's over the whole, image that I'm painting, whatever that subject is, my eyes are moving across it constantly. I'm not just uh, looking at one area and concentrating on it. So let's take this warm and let's bring it down. It's right about in here. So let's bring, again, it's darker. It's not as, it's not as light as this. So it's a little bit I'm going to throw a little blue into the color. Even if I want to come up in here again and make that a little darker up there, I'm going to do that right now. See that? We'll get a little bit, just move it so it, it really, and I'll probably brighten that at the last minute. So we're going to take that color that I just used with a, maybe a touch more orange in it, and we're going to come right there. Yep, that's just about right. And we're going to come all right. And that's not right, as I destroyed the reflection of the bridge. The bridge does this. And so we have that, have a little bit here, a little flavor right in there, over in here, back here. All right, let's keep moving. Carolyn Rogers says it looks very easy when you do it. <laughs> it's not very easy. <laughs> if it looks easy, uh, it's because you're seeing it on video. <laughs> it's, you know, painting is just not easy. I don't care what anybody says. If someone says that you make it look easy, you know, I can take that as a compliment, but truthfully, it's not. It's practice. I think it's just your ears of practice and confidence. Confidence, yeah. Confidence comes like in anything else you do. Confidence comes with uh, repetition. You don't you don't get confidence any other way. So let's do the um, the dark of that window up above, and it's got to be over a little bit. So we're going to kind of do it right about here, 
add hair, add hair. And it's got a little, there's not much perspective to it. What I can see, a little bit on the top. So I've got to fill that area in because I kind of messed up just like I did on the, um, on this right now. Now there's green, there's a green light. And I, I kind of remember this from being there. Uh, that in the, in, it was darker. In the back part of it, it was more illuminated down here. You can see where it's really light. And uh, patio area? yeah, that was a patio, exactly. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's probably where we ate that night. I don't know if we ate here this night, by the way. So this is green. Oh, I'm pretty close, huh? Mm -hmm. Kind of like that. This is a double window, so it comes all the way over, about here. So I had to paint over the my um, orange. Yeah, that's that's a good start. So let's take that color, a little bit darker, just a little more green in it. Let's bring it down, right? That's the orange, right? there and right there. Uh, Chris Turner wants to know if <clears throat> there are any costume figure demos coming soon. Sure. Costume figure. Hmm. Let me let me think. Yeah, I could do a, I want to just do a fig. I want to do the figure, you know, unless I do a portrait, I would just as soon put the figure in an environment. Um, but yeah. I'm just thinking of images that I have. So, I, you know, this is not a time where I can go out and get a whole bunch of new images. So, um, but I think I have a few. I know I have a couple from Cuba. Brighter. Right down, I mentioned, I was probably gonna illuminate it more down at the bottom. So I just made a little, so now we want that raking light. I want that light feeling like it's, going from, from light into shadow. I don't quite have it where I want it yet, but you know, I'm approaching where I want, where I think it should be. Uh, but I've got now, when I take that green that I use, I add a blue to it because I see right here, it's darker and it fades. So I got it. So now we're starting to get some of that stuff going on. There's a little bit of green back in here. Um, I'm almost getting where I'm going to start dealing with a little bit more refinement or kind of going right in between. I'm not really into total refinement, but I'm starting, because I'm starting to clarify things, I consider that a form of refinement. And so we're going to clarify that part of the bridge. And Chris Turner, let me think, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, Art Center really good at cartoons. Am I right or wrong there? I could be. <laughs> I'm going back 30 plus years trying to remember this. So try to keep my mind sharp so I don't uh, develop uh, anything, any sort of memory problems. Uh, <laughs> Might be right. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see if Chris responds. For some reason that just sticks in my mind, and I could be wrong. I remembered Steve, Steve Gray, and his his cartoons. So that I was really uh, on top of. If I'm wrong, I apologize. Maybe you were just a funny guy. So getting that reflection down. Now, um, the banister, I'm using, a, by the way, I'm using a, this filbert, this long bristled filbert, small one, to indicate some of the, uh, now that's a little too light. So I throw a little umber into it, maybe just kind of tone it down without changing its color radically. 
Chris said, I, I've hopefully moved on a bit, but that is true. I was done in 82. You did, but you did do some humorous stuff, if I'm not mistaken, things that were a little more cartoony. The reason I say that is I'm a closet cartoonist, and I know Steve kind of knows that, and a few other people know it. Um, I was a, and I know my buddy Chuck Pyle knows it. We've talked about it many times. We're both huge Jack Davis and the old Mad Magazine crew fan. In fact, that's kind of how I got interested in art in general. I did, uh, I was a bit, I, I kind of copied the style of those guys when I was in high school. And I think when I was a senior in high school, I, uh, I, I, when I was a junior, I started doing caricatures. And when I was a senior, I actually started trying to do portraits. And that led me to being like doing more serious art, not so much cartoony. Still love it though. Between Jack Davis and Mort Drucker and Charles Saxon, all those guys were love it all. I'm blocking what was up there. If I'm blocking, I'm sorry. I have to, to a degree. I'm trying. This is a little bit of refinement, by the. Just so you guys know, as soon as you start clarifying things, that's really when you're refining. The thing about it is that paint is very wet. And I'm having a heck of a hard time getting it to sit on top. A little brighter there, and this window is about here. I have a. I left it in the wrong spot, by the way, just so. You, so we're gonna bring it all the way down. A little liner, it's like a number two liner. A little bit down here, a little bit here, a little bit in here, but not much. Okay, let's cover that spot that I messed up. A little more open. Now it goes down well, wouldn't you know it? There we go. Let's get some dark, some dark snaps right in here. This bothers me because it's all kind of a little bit too simple. I could probably chew it up. Um, if I can, I will. If I can't, I won't. How's that sound? Okay. Let's get into what we call refinement to a degree. And then, because I'm still kind of in right in between the two, I'm not totally refining, but I'm not totally. I'm going to try some medium in this, a little bit of the uh, solvent free gel. And I'm going to use my beat up mall stick here just so I don't rest my hand down on the, all the wet paint. Let's see what I can get. That's better. That's better. Finally. Be a little dirtier, probably a little lighter than I need to be here. But I'm just happy that it's that I'm getting the coverage that I want. So this is all the boring outlining that we have to do to make the thing work. The other thing that I find is what I paint Venice. There's a lot of this. All the bill, all the windows have some sort of filigree of some sort around them. And it's like, it's just like time, it's time consuming. Do you hold your breath when you make lines like that? Good question. Does somebody ask me that? I know I, I'm asking because I do that. <laughs> I yeah, I do, I think. I don't I never thought about it, but yeah, I probably do a lot of talking as I do this one. So obviously I'm holding my breath. But yeah, I think so. To a degree. See, it's amazing a little bit of this. So I've darkened it just a little bit, but a little bit of this 
really starts to bring it to some sort of refinement or some sort of stage. So we got a boulder beam here. Not that it has to be, because no one will know, once again, and a thinner one right here. And they're a little off, but you know what, sometimes the little off makes it more like a painting and not a photograph. So, I mean, that's my excuse, let's put it that way. Well, the building's kind of off anyway. Yeah, <laughs> Dutch buildings, if any of you guys have been there, now that's way off, I really screwed up there. Um, I put that too, way too close to the middle. So what do you do, watch. One, two, three, four. So get rid of, and we'll do it again. We'll do it over about here. And then one about here. And go back and we'll get, gonna go brighter now. Because as we get down lower, it gets brighter. So I added a little bit more Naples yellow to it. So what we're gonna do, is this window first. Told you this is a, this is a pain because it's time consuming. You notice how that flipped? I did that on purpose. Just I did not. There we go. And the side. And then we gotta this is gonna occur again in the water. So after you get this done, you get to go back and do it in the water. Isn't that fun? This is the difference between architecture and trees. Architecture, you gotta be, there's, there's a perspective and you have to have a little more accuracy. Trees, you can be really free form with it. So that's why a lot of times I know landscape painters that tell me they don't like to do architect. <laughs> they don't like it to do architecture because then they have to draw. Of course, the assumption is you don't have to draw to do trees, which is not true. It's just a different kind of drawing. So to be more exact with architecture. Well, you can be wrong with trees to a degree. You can't be wrong with architecture. I mean, you can be wrong in the size of a window, but perspectively, it's still got to fit into the. Um, into the uh, uh, grid of reality that the whole thing is taking on. Now, when I'm on location, I usually don't have a, a, a mole stick, but sometimes I'll even use my paintbrush as a mole stick and come down with that. I had to reload my brush. And this is a boring step to watch. Sorry, everybody. It's not the. It's not as fun as watching a big gooey tree go in, you know, but it's the way it is. It's like, that's why I wanted to do something different today. Do too much of the same thing and I feel like I'm just repeating myself. I'll go back to it. I mean, we're definitely going back to some, I got a big old oak tree I want to do. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely get back to it. It's just that right now I wanted to do something a little bit more and by making it nighttime, if I, again, if I have the time, I'm going to do some fun little stuff to it. I just don't know if I'm going to have the time, but let's hope. So as long as I've got that, I mentioned I have to get that in the water too. So let's, and I'm just going to use a free hand because water does, I mean, water, this is pretty still water, by the way. So the, um, the actual strokes could be a little bit more wobbly, particularly if this water were, is a, it, when boats would go by, it just get, it goes crazy. Uh, Lindy wants to know if your photo prints are on 
Photo paper or plain paper? It's our photo paper. I have the photo, these prints are from, from um, Staples. I think I mentioned this before. Um, I used to print my own, but with the cost of ink and the fact that I can get them done this big, this fast, and the cost of paper, these, these prints run me just a little over a dollar each. So it's really advantageous. So we scuff this wall up a little bit more. Again, that, that's what I would call refinement. Um, anything where you're adding some additional texture, uh, refinement of detail, it, that's all, you know, more or less in the finishing stage. Like adding a couple of steps in there. Um, we're gonna, we're building up to the foliage. I, I would like to add some more stuff in here. I don't know if I'm gonna have time. Um, I will definitely take one of my large brushes with the blue and the black, or the blue and the um, brown together and bring some more darks in these areas. The, the, this board, which I kind of like about, one of the things I do like about working on um, this kind of board is it absorbs quite rapidly, particularly if you paint thin with a lot of, uh, with a lot of Gamsol, I was going to say turf. Uh, if you do, what happens is it sucks it in Absolutely. and yeah, it lightens it up and allows you to push your darks one stage further. So it's kind of, it gives you, there's an advantage to it. Um, I do believe that I need to go in with that same color with my liner and hit a couple of the bars. So I don't know if you remember um, from Art Center, Christopher Peterson. He was a student of when you were there. Yeah, I do. I remember the name. You can't put your face, but I do remember the name. He's a friend of Paul Crowder's and Steve Gray was in his classes. Um, he had Bill Mond as a painter. He didn't have you, though. Um, he taught briefly at the Academy and then he also shot a pile. Um, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you taught at the Academy? Yeah. I, I have this website. We'll look at it after. I think I do know. I do. I do recall. And um, Linda Monahan wants to know what kind of board are you working on? So does Diane. It is same board I always work on. It's I, it's hardboard. Just like a. Um, it is. Uh, if you look. Masonite board. I've got. It's hardboard. It's literally another name would be masonite, mm -hmm. but it's it's thinner than most masonites. It's a little bit thinner, and. There we go. And then you just gesso it. What? You just gesso it. And yeah, a gesso it and add a little tone to the gesso. So it's not, uh, mm -hmm. I never like to work on white. Uh, I know I've mentioned that a hundred times. So um, we're going to get a little bit of the, the this moss in here. Now, what is that? It's really kind of a gray blue color. It's darker than the sky, but not a lot. So I'm playing around with a color right here. I've just got, I, I left the dirt in my brush. Um, I added some ultramarine and white, and I'm gonna test this. It's probably, I don't think this is light enough, just so you know. Oh, maybe it is. Uh, let's add a little bit more white, a little bit more blue. And there's, boy, there's some interesting, boy, if I had time, I could, let's just get this in here. Comes all the way out to here. Well, if you had Bill and you had Chuck, you had two great teachers. That's all I can say. I've known Bill for 30, God, 40 years. I haven't known Chuck as long, but uh, I've painted with Chuck in Italy. And uh, we have dinner every so often. In fact, we we'll want to get together soon. You know, if you stick around long enough <laughs> as an artist, you get to know a lot of other really good artists. And which is one of the joys of being an artist. You get to admire people that you, whose work you've seen and all of a sudden um, they're friends, you know. Bert Silverman feel very fortunate to uh, 
have not only met Bert, but kind of consider him a friend. Hopefully he considers me one. He did a, a wonderful little painting of, of Anna, which he said he didn't like, but he gave it to us. So we actually have a Bert Silverman original. And the other thing that I've been really fortunate is I, some of you may know of this book. Years ago, since I was director, I was able to start a fine art auction for the Academy of Art. Now what that's done is that's allowed me to purchase works from ex-students um, and artists and even current students uh, that, whose work I really admire. So I'm fortunate, I've got a John Poon, I've got a Laurie Kersey, I've got a Paul Cratter. I've got a Kevin Moore. I've got a Carolyn Meyer. Brian Blood. Who's that? Brian Blood. Brian Blood. Lori. Kurt, I think I mentioned Lori. Um, Carrie Ann Plank. Mary Brin. Yeah. The printmakers Carrie Ann Plank. Mary Brin. And a couple other students whose work I just. Anna actually bought a really nice piece for me uh, for a birthday present of uh, some oysters and I can't recall the artist's name. Also, Samantha Bueller, I've got, I grabbed two of her pieces about a year and a half ago. Hopefully we'll have our online auction. Yeah, hopefully we're gonna have our auction again this year, you guys. In November. We don't know, we never know. With this weird pandemic going on, we can't tell what's gonna happen from, from semester to semester. So we get a little warmer up in here, so I threw some more other colors and bringing the blue back because it feels like it's going a little too warm on me and we're going to kind of break it up bring some over here another one down here see when it hits the blue this light blue sky the actual uh, moss feels darker so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying, there's some beautiful warm colors and yes. it's really super, super subtle. But even back in here, we got some warms filtering in and it keeps it from looking boring. As it comes down lower, I'm gonna bring it down about in here. Then we have some dark sneaking back through right here. We just that basically goes back to the blue and brown. So you don't only paint one direction. It's one of the things meaning you only don't just paint whites. Sometimes you need to do darks. That's starting to shape up. Now we want to bring a little life to it. So um, I've got about 15 minutes. So we're going to bring a little life to it with lights. Okay. What is just in your own mind, you may be going, what the hell does he mean by lights? <laughs> um, I just realized that I say stuff sometimes knowing exactly what I mean, realizing that you guys are probably in the dark. Um, and that comes from the uh, artist being alone in a studio and talking to himself too much. Um, so lights, let's take my uh, little filter here. We got lights in these windows back here. What are those lights? Well, we're, let's start, the lightest color we have is white. And then the brightest color we have that works with that is yellow. So I've got my yellow Hansa light and my white and my medium and we're going to put a light right here look at that does that hurt your eyes and back in here there's other buildings little flickers of light and color go orange Whoa, look at that back in there. Maybe over in here. Maybe even back behind this tree. Whew. 
Okay. That's the fun of kind of playing around with abstract type stuff. Um, abstract type stuff? Yeah, technical term. You guys learn a lot of technical terms from me. Abstracted stuff, GUI, GUI paint. That's one of my favorites. I, I, I promised a long time ago I'd actually do one with just super gooey paint. I've really never done one large like that. So I might attempt one just to see what I can pull off. And if it doesn't come off, uh, you all just have to forgive me because I never know. So these lights are working their way down and they're going behind the moss. Another one behind the moss. And then there's some orange back along with it. And that's right in here. That's more of a red than an orange, isn't it? I lied. And it comes down here. And then I see some not quite as bright over here. And I can also do a little bit of the top. And I'm gonna brighten up a couple other things. And then I gotta add the railing, a little bit more information here, and the foliage. And we're okay. Actually, I don't know if we're okay, but. Lindy said she'd love to see a super gooey demo. She was trying to use more paint. I will do one. I just have to find the right image for it because it doesn't work with every image for me. You know, um, but I would love to try one large. I've never tried it. Like I've always, I think the largest real gooey piece I've ever done is about eight by 10. So I've never tried a uh, an 18 by 24, but I'm, I'm game. To show Carolyn Meyer no, no, no. I don't go. I don't go quite as crazy as <laughs> Carolyn. Oh, let's see. Let's do. Let's work on the railing. This is tedious. Once again, it's this is like doing to me. It's like doing the uh, lines around the windows. You got to get a rhythm. You got to get them spaced just right too. That looks pretty good. And then down about. Here would be another one, probably be one about here, even though we can't see it. And then on the other side, they're receiving more light. It's really interesting. On the other side, they're like bright, like the like the bright lights. So right about let's see one right about here. You mean okay. on the other side of the bridge. Other side of the bridge. One there. I don't see that one or that one, but we're going to put them in there anyway. Okay, as we go up, there's a few more. Is one I see one right about. Well, I've got to space them out a little bit more. There, there, there. I don't know where that other one, I don't see another one in there. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and put one here and here, okay? And now I gotta connect them. Voila, let's do it. Yeah, your paint's gotta be wet enough to do this. And you gotta follow the line of the bridge. One up above, and then there's one right, and they have them on the other side too. All the line of the bridge, okay.
point is that it needs to feel correct. And a little bit brighter on the back side, particularly right in here. Is it, do I see it above? Yeah, it's weird because it's going here, 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 underneath. This is getting really loose and gooey. Okay, I'm gonna um, get enough of that tree in to make sense. I want the tree up, up there. So I'm going with the brown, the green, and it's got a lot of warm. So I'm bringing ochre and orange into it. Maybe. A, You're talking about the tree that's more in the foreground? Are you right here. Okay. Now this is what I was trying to explain earlier. When you do trees, you can do them a lot different than when you do. You don't have to be as, as precise as when you do, but I do want that warm right there. There's a lot of warmth. So it, it makes a lot of warm into that color, a little bit of an orange, probably a little too much. And I see it overlap right here, which I really like. And it gets quite orange as it overlaps. So I took some, the orange and the ochre, and we're gonna follow this tree down from here and bring it in. I'm gonna bring a little more ochre to it because I want it to stand out a little more. And I'm gonna overlap right there. So I have some nice warm underneath all of this kind of reddish green brown I'm gonna put down. More orange right in here, I can see it. And what that is, is that ambient light that's coming from the ground. That's where we're getting that warm So it's like I've said about doing trees all along. You basically just put them in there and what doesn't work, you take your sky color and kind of work it back. Now I'm not gonna have time to do that, just so you know. I already know without a doubt. And that's the kind of thing if I do it on location, I might come back in the studio, spend 10 to 15 minutes kind of putting some, just some more sky holes into that tree to make it feel a little bit better. That comes down here too. I kind of like the way it overlaps. It overlaps, it even comes in here. So let's kind of take the same color, bring it in. I get some nice warm color right about in here. Whoa, did I really push that? This is where you kind of just play and get it to work. Overlaps, down in here, a little bit up in here. A little bit where it comes in here. And we've got to put some, some twigs in or some of the branches to make it make a little bit more sense than it does now. So let's put a few of those branches in and then we'll go back, do a little bit more to it. Dark, a darker branch, right? I like it. Use what you see. If you don't like what you see, don't put it in. If you like it, add it. Got to get dark enough. It's weird when I actually picked this one to do, I thought it was it was going to go pretty quick. It's actually taken longer than I had anticipated. There's a lot going on. So it may run over five minutes.
What colors did you mix for the green? Brown and green and a little ochre. And then sometimes I brought in a little orange. Um, I do want to get a little bit more going on in here. I thought one of the things that I might be able to do to this to, to make it kind of more, a little bit more interesting and exciting is maybe add a moon. So let's give it a shot, see if it'll work. If it doesn't work, I'll wipe it out. But I like to try things. I also like to add a little bit, if I could find a way to add more to my image, in my image, and this, this by image, I mean, whether I'm on location or whether I'm uh, painting from photograph. If I, could, if I could find more than I can add to it, why not? You know, at least give it a try. If it doesn't work, wipe it out. That's what erasers are for. So I'm bringing more blue and a little bit more light to some of these back here. Just like as I come forward, I might add little warmer dark snaps here and there that I can see. I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna try and add a moon up there. Cause you know how you get early evening moons sometimes. So I took some white and some Naples together and the one that's centered, I'm gonna maybe put it behind. I'm not gonna reflect it because I'm not reflecting the tree. I always like it to go behind something rather than just be out there in the middle of nowhere. Okay, let's leave that alone. I don't know if I like it. I can't tell, but I might. That's what, that's what tomorrow's for, you guys. Tomorrow is always the time that you can look at your piece and go, whoa, I don't like what I did, or maybe I do. Now, I see some warmth coming in, so I took this orange, and right from the side, I'm just moving it into that color. I'm going to bring some of that blue sky back. Once you put that in, then it can also kind of reflect some of that blue sky back in there too. So you can play back and forth in this kind of stuff forever, truthfully. And then if I want to, I can right at, bring the sky a little brighter, just like I gradated it. So I bring it a little bit brighter as it comes up and meets the um, moss. and get it to blend down into the darker sky color. It feels pretty good. And I wanna put a couple lights. The green, for example, has got some darks and some lights into it in the windows. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll probably call it pretty close to done. So we're gonna put a little dark right in here. That's darker than I wanted to go. Running a little over. Yep. I knew I was going to run a little over. And put a little bit of a light right there. And as I didn't get a chance to, but as these areas go down, I might want to brighten them a little bit more to make it feel right. I'm not pleased with this. I think I need a lot more feeling of scuff and feeling of um, way too light. And we just kind of come over it, break it up, break it up. Don't be afraid to be wrong. 
probably, you know, if nothing else, when you watch these, that's the one thing you're saying. Uh, well, I have, if I mess up, I mess up. And I just, you can keep going until it works. Uh, as an illustrator, I never had that opportunity, but as a painter, it's really kind of nice because you actually have that freedom. You can mess up, you can go back, you can fix it uh, because the time constraint isn't there that there is in an illustration project. So that works okay. It's not dynamite, but I think it's doing, oh, geez, I, one thing I didn't do. On the other side, there is also moss. This is just on the one side. So I took green, mixed it in the brown and blue. I just want to come in. It's a little bit lighter. All right, not quite light enough. Let's, because I can see it back here. It gets quite a bit lighter. So I took the light blue and added it in into the green. Let's see what we can get right in here. That's good. That's too prominent. Darken it a little bit, bring it back. Okay, that's that's probably about as far as I'm going to get on um, this particular piece. I'll probably put a few more minutes in and maybe add some negative spaces in here, maybe a little bit more dark in the roof, refine a few little things. But, you know, this is basically about what I would get if I were doing a plain air piece, which is kind of, I always look at these as a form of, of direct painting that I would do if I were on location. So I don't know how that came off to you. It looks okay to me, doesn't look great. It looks uh, like, it's set up for about another 20 minutes worth of fussing, which is, I'm, I just might do that. And if I do, I will post that for you. Um, in any event, hopefully you guys got something out of this. A little bit different uh, in terms of what I painted. And that's always a little bit of a goal of mine is to try and not repeat myself too much, you know, try something different. I will take to heart what was said about the, uh, the, um, Closed figure model. I will also take to heart what was said about uh, uh, a gooey painting. So I'm going to see <laughs> if I can come up with something uh, next week that fits one of those genres. I will do it. Um, in other words, happy painting. I'm messing around, as you can see. Okay. All right. Just to get in, hair's in my face, coffee's cold, <laughs> thus is life. Okay, paint, have fun, stay safe. I got my first vaccine, get my second one in two weeks, looking forward to it. Okay, bye-bye everybody. Thanks everybody, thanks Tim.